Jason Isaacs, the lead actor, sort of, he, he's, a, he's a very intense studies, he needs to pull apart his character and like become that person in order to do what he does. So, um, you know, he went on a long journey with grieving and, and you know, would tell you what he found there. But the weird thing is the character is avoiding grieving. Like for him, he still has everybody. So he's, he's in a weird place of not grieving, but being surrounded by people who, who have lost someone. So in a weird way, he, his reactions are all wrong. He's not, he's not doing what you would expect, I suppose, except for denial. You're in his head, so you both have to kind of not know. And um, I think you will eventually see those scenes. You know, what was it like to be in the hospital and wake up and be told one person was dead, and then wake up again and be told the other. But um, again, the the tonnage of what has to happen in any given episode sort of forced that we get on with it. That was the other thing, like that I learned from Lone Star. Like that was a super slow burn pilot. Like you didn't get to the crux of what the show was gonna be until the last minute of the first episode. So you take, you take your, your pilot out and you screen it, you do these things called dial tests, and they get an audience of like uh, 60 paid, paid people in Hollywood and they have a little dial, and they literally like turn it up when they dig it and they turn it down when they don't, and you sit there and you watch your show with this like stock market ticker, and you see it go up and down, and it's like, and you see it go down and you're like, well, the, the, uh, wait till they get to this scene, that'll save us, and they kind of go, and then they kind of don't. <laughs> so um, the problem with Lone Star, like the people who were in all the way, they dug it. The people who were like halfway through, either they hadn't gotten yet to like what the guy's dilemma was really gonna be. So I just set myself the goal of, by the time the teaser is over with this, you will know exactly what the show is. It's a guy, he lives in two worlds, he has two therapists, he has a wife and a son, and he has two cases. And like, I just put a clock on that and made myself do it in eight minutes. It also, you kind of need that Greek chorus. They're the only people who know the whole story. So the, they're the only people he can talk openly about what his real problem is and talk about the other world. So it's sort of what makes it comprehensible, I think, for the audience. So to some extent, um, yeah, that continues. At the same time, uh, we found you need less of it as you go on, because like, you get it, and he doesn't need to say X, Y, Z happened in my dream, I was there, I saw it. So um, I think the therapists, are their roles are evolving as the show goes on. But as far as the duality of things go, like I'm, I think we all, you cannot help but look back at your life and wonder like at the different forks, if you had gone this way instead of that way, like how could things have been different? And uh, I'm drawn to characters who instead of just asking the questions, start to explore how their life could be radically different or what their life would look like if it were lived in two very, very different ways.